Welcome to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. This is One Ounce Wednesday. On One Ounce Wednesday, I take a blind sample out of this box behind me. I pour it into a glass and I blind review its blind whiskey sample ass. The samples come from a variety of sources. Some of them come from me just pouring an ounce of whiskey into a sample jar to blind review later. Some of them come from friends, some of them come from Patreon, and other samples come from producers or distillers. So if you're ready for One Ounce Wednesday to commence, give me a hell yeah, hell yeah. It's like Stone Cold Steve Austin, except for I didn't sound like him. Brother. Clean Glen Cairn glass, Whew. go for a sample. Got one. This one feels big. This one feels big. It's a big, big one. There's nothing in there. Why is there? Wait, it's got a cap on it. Okay. <laughs> now there's something in there. Oh, that's probably enough. That is more than an ounce, that's a lot. That is a lot of whiskey in that glass. That was a two ounce sample bottle and I initially thought it was empty, but now I realize that it was full and I put most of it in here. One ounce Wednesday, two ounce Wednesday, whatever. No one's counting, unless of course you are, in which case, stop. Going for a nose. <sighs> smells good. It smells very good. It smells very good and very familiar. I would say that this is a bourbon and not a rye. Once you put a bunch of it into a glass, it seems to look darker than it is typically. But based off of the color of this, it's got some age on it. Definitely has some age on it. Based off of the nose, 12 years plus, 12 plus. It smells like a Belgian waffle caught fire inside of a new charred oak barrel. And then the only way to put it out was to dose it with 100 plus proof bourbon whiskey. Accurate. Very accurate. There are some notes on here that are like reminding me of something, but I can't quite put my tiny little finger on it. It is sweet, but it's also like spiky and bird's nesty. It's got a bit of nature to it. It's got a bit of tree limb to it, like the things that happen up in the top of trees. I've always been what some doctors have considered to be at least kind of obese, so I've never really been a tree climber, but I imagine that the smell of what happens up inside tall trees on branches, I'm just going out on a limb here to say that that's what this smells like. If those branches were soaked in alcohol and fruity, a little fruity. A little bit of root beer, a little bit of vanilla, cherry, Dr. Pepper, tropical teaser, whatever the hell the newest Dr. Pepper is. A very interesting and complex nose. It's going in a bunch of different directions that are pleasing me. Is it spicy? Is it sweet? Is it old? Hillary Duff's diary that's deep. The palate, way more powerful than I expected. That was like the first time you mouthed off to your mother and she put a bar of soap in your mouth. Except for the bar of soap was like really good bourbon and made you say the F word just so you could taste it again. Second sip. That is a jungle gym of flavor. That is at least 120 proof. It definitely reminds me of like a Barton product or a Brown Foreman product. It's like a melted candy bar and like the perfect amount of oak, but concentrated down into an extra proofy, extra punchy, extra princessy. No, extra p. It's just a great, great bird. Like, this is just a great bourbon. I love the one ounce Wednesdays where I pull something extra super damn good out of that box. And today is no exception because this glass breaking rocks. This is so good. Could this be one of the single barrel Lucky Sevens, like the proprietor 14 year? Like at barrel strength, possibly. Third sip, dumb hatch. Bam, dang. Shiza. That's freaking good. 
That is a remarkable whiskey. That is right down my alley, right up my ass, like directly. Straight shot, Google Maps, green road. It's breaking green the whole way. Like the German Autobahn of down my alley up my ass. Even at a lower proof, I think that this bourbon would be spectacular, but at the high proof that it's at, I think it's remarkable. I'm gonna say that on this one ounce Wednesday, I'm gonna give this blind score an absolutely insane score. And it might not be Enrique Iglesias, but it can be my hero with a score of 9.0. 9 point freaking zero. I'm assuming this is a bourbon and I am head over heels for whatever is in this glass. And for my big ass, 271 pounds, I've gained 50 back. I gained 50 back. For my 271 pound ass to go head over heels is an accomplishment. I am very excited to see what in the hell I'm tasting on this one ounce Wednesday because it does all the things that I want some of the best bourbon whiskey to do. And without further ado, we were drinking. What the fudge. Thanks to Jimmy Copeland, this is the Prideful Goat 15 year. Batch 3, Char 3, 114.1 proof. Tastes higher proof than that. 78.5% corn, 13% rye, 8.5% malted barley. This was one of my favorite samples I've tried in a very long time. And now I want to find a bottle so bad. Thank you, Jimmy Copeland, for sharing that with me. You are a very large man in terms of generosity and also size and I love both of those things about you. That's gonna do it for this video. Whether you loved this video or hated every second of it, hit the thumbs up. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey. Like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on road trips, just driving. Sometimes driving is great, sometimes driving sucks, but a good road trip is both. A good road trip will make you smile and make you frown. It will make you want to turn around but it will also make you want to keep going to your destination and get there as fast as possible. I believe a good summer road trip is very important to a small family. If you can fit all of your family inside of one vehicle and head cross country, then do it. We take one every year. Every summer we take a road trip from Colorado up to the upper peninsula of Michigan. That's happening again this year. Crying and whining and stopping to pee and fast food and gas station snacks, and flat pop, bad gas mileage, running into terrible weather, expensive hotels, zero sexual activity, because there's kids in the car, and even if there weren't, you're not that lucky, and staying with the in-laws. Could things get any better than that? Absolutely. Absolutely they could. But how else are you gonna see the cornfields of Iowa? in Nebraska while dodging twisters.